Um, yeah, thanks for the warm introduction. Um, yeah, my name is Yuan. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm very extremely happy presenting my internship work at the Home Depot. And the topic of this internship project is on large graph-based session recommendation with session adaptive propagation. And on a personal note, starting this fall semester, I was joining the University of Oregon as assistant professor. So uh, if you have any students who are willing to read the PhD, feel free to uh, contact me because I'm currently actively hiring to PhD students. Thanks. Um, yeah, for the work. So basically the conventional recommendation typically works by given previously users interacted items, try to predict like what are the next items this user might want to interact with. For example, you can see in this, uh, in this case, this user interact with many like five items but among these five items, there appears to be obviously two conflicting interests. Like one interest is for decorating the garden, like the user pushes or click the cornerstone, click the flower, as you cut the lawn mover, all of these three items are used for uh, decorating the garden. While the last two items are like kind of food, like order the foods, right? So if we fuse all of these interests together to make the recommendation, that cannot be good which leads to the session recommendation where we kind of split these two five, five um, interacted items into two sequences so that if we only make recommendation for each sequence, we kind of avoid of, uh, fusing these two very different intentions. However, with the previous way to do this sequence recommendation, they only look at the information among each sequence. In this case, take the transformer model as a way established example here. They take the three meta information of this three product in this sequence and do some self attention and make the next item prediction. The problem with it is the current framework here only use the information within the products of the same session. However, there is a wide of knowledge outside of the current session that has not been explored by the current model. And one of the natural way here is by resorts the um, large amount of the knowledge stored in the knowledge graph. As you can see here, actually for different items, they have many different relationships. Like if we take a look at the flower and also the water cane, they are frequently purchased by the same customer for their garden usage, right? So there are some logical relations between the flower and the water cane. So if we can use the neighborhood information among around the flower, which is currently involved in the current sequence down below, then we kind of argument or provide this model with some additional knowledge or information that we can use to argument our recommendation. However, if we just directly use this recommendation, uh, use the information from the knowledge graph, like here, take the five neighbors among our flower, we might end up with a very bad situation because among these five neighbors, three of them are for garden. If you look at the right-hand side, the lopper, the water cane, and the ax, while two of them are specifically decorated for kitchen, like on the right-hand side, the table and sink. If we directly use all of these five neighbors to augment our flower, apparently gonna, not all of them gonna help, right? Because the intention of this sequence is to decorate the garden, apparently. So that's to say, same items, even if we look at the same item, if they are positioning different se sessions or sequences, we should look at different neighborhood information to augment this item. So this motivates us to kind of design this sequence adaptive message passing to adaptively leverage the neighborhood information. So that's kind of like our two intuition or the motivations. So the general goal here is we want to adaptively augment the limited knowledge for each session. And the two specific contributions we make in our work is we want to construct a knowledge graph. And the specific intuition is we assume items with higher co-appearance frequency in the same sequence should have higher logical relations so that we should construct an age between them to make them into our knowledge graph. And the second contribution is this session adaptive message passing so basically we want to use the session as a context to, for each item as a key to query their neighborhoods. So following this framework, as for our first contribution, we basically try to set up the ages among different items and we can count the frequency among each pair of products in terms of how many times 
they are involved in many different sequences, right? We can count this frequency and we can do some importance filtering to filtering those less, um, like less frequently co-appeared items and only remain those frequently appeared items to make them into our knowledge graph. And the second contribution is we want to adaptively aggregate our neighborhood information. How do we do that? The general intuition is for the same item, if they are positioned into different contexts, we should derive some different information for them to query our neighbors. As you can see here, we first use the self-attention layer to get the context embedding about each item. So that even for the same item, if their context or the sequence are different, they would also end up with different contexts. And then we will treat this context as a key to query our neighborhood and the retrieval their neighborhood information. In general speaking, combine these two contributions together, we end up with our framework. The first step is to construct a knowledge graph offline using sessions previously. And then we want to use the first transformer layer to derive the item contextual embedding. And we will use this contextual embedding to query our neighborhood, basically to compute the neighborhood attention by heterogeneous graph transformer, where the key is directly taken from this context embedding. And the last step is we will use this attention to do the message passing so we can realize this adaptive message propagation. Um, for the experiments, we conduct this session recommendation on three data sets, where the first two of which coming from the existing literature, where the last one is coming from uh, that we briefly modify the sessions from the Home Depot. And here is one experiment. Firstly, we compare augmenting each of our baseline, like the RM based one, transformer based one, or graph based one by our strategy, like using the sequence adaptive propagation or whether we should have this knowledge graph. And basically comparing the, comparing the result in these two blocks, we can see that the knowledge graph could really enhance the session recommendation performance. And furthermore, we specifically compile whether we should incorporate this sequence adaptive propagation and based on the results, it also uh, works. Uh, and also we conduct the, like the sensitive analysis over the performance among different sequences of different item sparsity. Basically, if the items are less frequently involved in many other sequences, then this session should have higher sparsity or less density. And we can see that our framework, knowledge graph uh, session recommendation, KGHT, are better than the existing framework, especially on the sessions involves uh, sparse items because those items require additional knowledge and actually using KGHT would help more. And lastly, we conduct the real world experiments on a, uh, a, a 6.1 million sessions ranging across two years at the Home Depot and here's one uh, example showing ours works while the previous model at the Home Depot does not work. And you can see here, the previous model, this M2T rack at the Home Depot, they all recommending this kind of garden related items. Um, while the ground truth item in the next should be this mop refill. But if using our framework, we kind of be able to recommend this mop refill because when we look at the neighbors of the first item in this sequence, this spray mop one, among its neighbors, there are one neighbor called the mop refill. So we hypothesize that using this neighborhood information enable our model to make the correct recommendation. And furthermore, we conduct the case study on visualizing the effectiveness of our session adaptive message passing. And you can see in this sequence, apparently this user, this his decoration uh, intention is to decorate his garden. And we can find that among the neighborhoods of each of our items, like the other items that are related to the current session would end up with higher attention. Like this ball rake one end up with 0.3 attention while this chandelier basically is nothing related to the intention of decorating the garden. It's end up with very few attention weights. And furthermore, if we compare the attention of neighbors of the same, same item, Boric 1 and Boric Khan, we can see that because they are positioned into these two different sequences, so the attention of their neighbors 
even their neighbors are exactly the same, but the attention are also different. So this successfully verified the effectiveness of our session adaptive message passing. So uh, due to the time limit, I will skip this future work part, but use uh, last minute to do the summarization and the acknowledgement. So to summarize, our contributions are twofold. The first one is we propose the knowledge graph construction method to construct a knowledge graph to augment the knowledge for each session. And the second one is in observing that different sessions require different attention to the neighborhoods, even for the same item, we propose this session adaptive message passing. And with all that, I concluding my work. Um, feel free if you have any question.